Welcome back to Cartoon Template for Short Story Craft. At the end of the previous episode, I had generated three random pairings from a list of 22 fiction genres to be applied to three new short stories of varying, pace, uh, varying time and pacing constraints using the template of I Want to Be a Sailor. Those double genres were Romance and Paranoid, Making Paranoid Romance, Speculative Science Fiction, and Urban Action. So let's see how these three short stories turned out. Alright, to review the essential elements of I want to be a sailor, uh, a character wants X but is not aware of risk Z. They try X, they experience Z, things go bad and they panic or get really bad. Uh, they get rescued and, and recover, however, they return to X knowing that Risk Z remains. The key point to remember is the protag's true nature is tested. Despite adversity, the true nature remains resolute. Alright, so let's see how I applied this to our three stories here. Our first double genre was Paranoid Romance. I wasn't real clear on what Paranoid was. So, um... Let's see, Paranoid is fiction, literature, explore subject of nature and reality, how it can be manipulated by forces and power. And it can be external, such as totalitarian government, or internal, such as mental illness or refusal to accept the harshness. Uh, conspiracies of power told by an unreliable narrator. However, most popular type Paranoid is the universe appears to be surface, to be definite and real, but upon closer inspection, actually is deliberately misleading. These works they're either questions you write blah, blah, blah. Alright, and in romance, romance the story involves chivalry and adventure is about characters' relationships or engagements and uh, subgenres follow mutual attraction to love with a man and woman's main plot and have a happy end. Alright, whatever. So let's get back to our perfect family. This is a story I came up with. It opens up with Dawn contemplating her perfect husband, Jim. Here's a situation. It just got worse. She professes to self love for a soldier man. That really doesn't sound all that worse. She cites all of her own fa faults in their past arguments. So there's hope that the story will continue. Uh, ashamed of her own illegitimateness, she questions her self worthiness. Oh no, this doesn't sound too good. She claims she'll never be a whore like her own mother. So we're going to assume that uh, she never did know who her own father was. She knew her mom was, but did not know who her father was. Her family will be perfect. So that's the first constraint. She got it. She's going to make herself a perfect family. She cleans their perfect house and straightens and squares everything. She gets on the phone and makes a very weird phone call to her brother-in-law about what is a perfect meal to prepare for his brother, her husband. She prepares the meal, she sets the table, she gets all dressed up in the perfect dress, and waits and fidgets. But then she notices the spare room is empty. She gets distraught. They have no children in the house. Woe is me! A perfect family must have children. She wails. Oh no. But it's going to be okay now because the husband's brother, alerted previously to her weird behavior, comes to make sure she's okay and consoles her. So it's okay now. Distraught and hazy-minded, hazy Dawn mistakes her brother for her husband and infidelity happens. Whoa, this is terrible. I can't believe I slept with my brother-in-law. What? So we need to get a solution. This is going to come out. So the neighbor hears all this wailing and cry, comes over to check on her, calls Dawn's mother. So I guess everyone kind of knows Dawn's a little bit nutty. Mother comes to check up on Dawn, reassures her the house is fine, but also reassures that Dawn, you have no husband, you have no ring, you're not married. So Mom cuddles and holds poor Dawn and tells her the story of Dawn's own perfect father. But we already know that Mom never had a father, Dawn never had a father, Mother never had a husband. And then we see that the mental health uh, continues on from mother to daughter as Dawn straightens an end table item. The second randomly generated double genre pairing was speculative science fiction. It was not real clear on exactly, you know, at the time they generated that, it seemed rather uh, redundant to have both speculative and science fiction together. 
But as I did a little bit more homework, it seems that speculative is a little bit broader and more encompassing than just strict science fiction. Uh, speculative includes uh, science fiction, fantasy, and horror, and supernatural, and superhero, and utopian, dystopian futures, plus alternate history. Basically, it's just you, speculative science fiction would be science fiction and just has some weird, strange elements to it. They just are not strictly sciencey sort of based. The story I came up with was Shalimar Gambit, and I can explain that later if anybody cares. If you just leave a comment, I'll go ahead and answer it then. Otherwise, I just think at the time now. Uh, the story will begin with the situation as a military scientist introduces a time machine to a general and his troops. General proclaims that he wants to go back in time and ensure peace. Yeah, that's not too so good. Scientist warns that the machine's preliminary development, and it's not exactly reliable. So there's hope that no one will. Uh, there's hope that they'll not do something stupid. The general affirms this understanding. Um, so he says, "Okay, I understand it, but I, despite that, you know, if he says, okay, I understand, I'm not going to go, then the story's over. But." He says he's going to go anyway. I understand it, but I'm going anyway. He rallies his troops. So the first constraints achieved. He got it. They're all, the, the story will continue. Uh, he leads them to the portal, and they have a wacky psycho trip. These things are good for sucking up time. Remember, this is our uh, five to seven minute long story here. He leads them to the portal wacky psycho trip, and they're going to follow an unmarked river in an unknown land, doing recon. The river leads to a lake in a valley, where there's strange terrain and vegetation are noted. Ooh, ah, beautiful sights. They spot movement in the bushes. Oh no, it's dinosaurs. Carnivorous dinosaurs chase them. Intercut with scientists watching and laughing at them. The dinos close in, catch and eat the soldier, and General Four cries for help. Ah, they're all gonna die. All right. So the constraint is scientists start working their control, or the solution rather is the scientists start working on their controls. General's troops are being gobbled up like candy by the dinos. So here we are building up to our outcome. The scientists get to get the general plus a few soldiers back. The scientists admire the general, but General just wants to go back with more weapons. Woohoo! I'll come achieved! So, this is how we uh, show that um, the general wanted X, not aware of risk Z, tries X, experiences Z, gets rescued, and returns to X knowing that risk Z remains. Alright, let's move on to story number three. Alright, the third story will be applied to a music video, typically lasting three to six minutes. But the song I ended up picking for my urban action double genre was Stax's song, Watch Out. I found this at artistserver.com and it turns out to be a public domain song, allowing me the freedom to pretty much do whatever I want in the video. The double genre selected was urban action. Action I'm familiar with, but urban I had to do a little homework on. Urban fiction is set in the city landscape. It's much defined by socioeconomic realities. Profanity, sex, and violence are usually explicit, nothing shied away from. An important part to remember is a lot of the sex, drugs, and violence in it uh, is all for the purposes of street survival as a misguided means of gaining wealth to move out of the uh, environment. It's survivalist fiction in a dystopian setting. The, st the story I came up with uh, for Stax's Watch Out is, um, well, will be this. So let me start the song here, and I'll follow along best I can. I open it up with guys congregating on a mansion patio before the speakers will be saved. Um, in the video. Sage will lay down the evil truths to his disciples, so that's the situation. However, it gets worse when one of the gangbangers speaks out. He uh, wants to roll different than the directions that his boss Sage gives him. Sage tries to redirect with a warning about you know, how things are going to get bad and he tries to do it his way. Sage goes on to recount how uh, he did everything's wonderful and fantastic, which all we'll see. He sings over 
was wonderful, but really they were all lies. Gangbanger nods in belief, but then restates that he wants to roll his own way, and the constraint is achieved when they're already out on the street and violating uh, Sage's law. Next part goes really, really fast. Gangbanger beats and berates his own crew. Gangbanger crew robs a jewelry store. Gunfight breaks out. Employee and one of the crew members is killed, and the others escape. At this point, the gangbangers crew are living it up somewhere else, off site, and uh, with drugs and girls. Everything's pretty cool. Except now, I have to stop when he's ID'd on the news for both the robbery and the murder. The gangbanger freaks out. Um, outside, we'll have a bunch of cop cars dropping in on site. Police pour out while SWAT races uh, upstairs. The girls start to scream. The crew members, uh, surviving crew members, have all armed themselves. SWAT breaks in the doors. The armed crew members are all shot and killed, and gangbanger is arrested. So this will be the low point of the story. Fast again. So Sage attends the game bangers at court arraignment, posts his bond, and drives away in a limo. The girls tell Sage of an exploit, a uh, game banger affirms interest in a life, and Sage forces the game banger to shoot the girls as witnesses, even though he's sad. So the game banger provides the stolen jewelry, but then Sage turns right around and shoots and kills the game banger, and he's dumped on the roadside with his girls as he drives off with the with the jewels. And this would be during the coda of the song. So from the song is, let me go back down here, the song is told from the perspective of Stax slash Sage, who would be this year, which would be equivalent to the mother discussing her son's actions. So as a mother discussing her son's actions, the son would be the gangbanger who wants X but is not aware of risk Z. Z is exactly what Sage was warning him about. So Gangbanger tries uh, to do things his own way. Uh, it goes sour for him. Sage kind of rescues him. And uh, the Gangbanger wants to return to doing things, wants to return to life knowing that these are the risks. But it ends up, Sage ends up killing him anyway. And that's how I applied it. Uh, this template to yeah, the music video. Alright, if I'm able to successfully dump out the next uh, three episodes of Cartoon Template over the course of the next uh, three weeks, uh, next one should fall on the 2nd, and then fall by the 16th, and fall by the 30th. And since October is quite popular for having uh, for a horror theme, I am going to see about just making um, the next uh, three months, or three episodes rather, uh, I'll be on assorted horror films or horror shorts. So let's go ahead over to our random.org and generate some uh, first genres of our double genres, which will be something horror. Let's see, we'll do 14, 11, and 15. 14, let's see if I can get 14, 11, I don't want it. 14, 11, and 15. 14 is political horror interesting for a one minute movie. 11 is mystery horror. Alright. And then 15 is romance horror. I did romance. I want to do something different. Let's try 16. 16, 16 is a saga horror for, set to a music video. No, that just spells doom. Number two, let's try to adventure horror. And say that'll work out all right. All right, give me a couple weeks here, and I will see about writing three uh, individual s short stories set to the template created by Porky's Garden. Wish me luck. All right, if you like this episode of Cartoon Template for Short Story Craft, go ahead and please like it. And if you've enjoyed this whole entire series and find it useful, please by all means subscribe. Thank you, and you folks have a nice day.